All right. Well, I appreciate you guys coming on. It's good to see you guys again. I hope everybody has been well. Um, really excited about the start of our uh, 2021 signing class. Um, all those kids who we had penciled in to commit uh, last night uh, signed, and, and we really appreciate that. Um, even more so to be said about what our staff has done. And I mean, it is, you know, take me out of the picture here. What our assistant coaches were able to do, um, you got to remember, we were sent home before we had, we had a huge, huge visit set. And I mean, big time players coming in, right? The weekend before we got sent home for the pandemic. Um, so we were one of the schools, went on a late break and came back and we didn't have any of these kids visit. We didn't really have any 2021 20, recruits step on our campus, which in our opinion is um, one of our biggest selling points. I mean, you guys have seen it. You got a beautiful campus, one of the best cities in the world. And um, so what our staff was able to do um, without having any of these kids visit, shake their hands and uh, show them around our campus and facility, I give them a lot of credit. I appreciate all their hard work. Um, we got some really good recruiters on the staff uh, because they're great people. They love football and they know how to coach football. And I think that's how you win in college football. I um, also want to thank Hannah Femia, Jason Kwan, Alex Kurtz, Jack Murphy, uh, Josh Pierre-Jean, Tommy McCabe, uh, just some of our recruiting staff who go unnoticed uh, yet have done a tremendous job and put in a ton of hours. Our video people, Joey, Mike, or I'm sorry, Anthony, Brent, Mike, um, and Joey, just guys who've done a tremendous job. Um, you guys have seen our social media right now. Uh, they, do a, they do a tremendous job. So a lot of credit needs to go to our assistant coaches all the people involved. And um, again, I think it's a start. I think we'll, we'll continue to work through this class and uh, continue to get it better. Um, but I love the kids that we've brought in. They're, they're a good group, special group of people. And I'm very grateful for them sticking with us without really meeting in person. So I'm excited and looking forward to taking your questions. We'll start things off with Rich. Coach, I'm under the assumption that you've visited a few living rooms uh, in your days as a recruiter. Uh, when you don't have that personal touch, how did you have to sell the program, you know, as we're talking to each other right now, I guess? Yeah, Rich, we did it like this. Um, you know, you really think back to the start of the quarantine. And honestly, it was the, the most important thing we had to do, Rich, was watch film together. So we had to watch the film and evaluate film on Zoom like this together. Um which was difficult at first, but we worked around it and didn't make excuses. And then our first introductions to players and parents were over Zoom. And, you know, countless hours of that, answering questions, trying just to get to know people, get, getting to know someone through Zoom. You know, it's good and it's bad. It's, it's better, in my opinion, than talking on the phone. Is a kid sitting up straight? Does he look you in the eye? Um, you know, you get, you get to find out a lot about people when you spend a lot of time on Zoom with people. And um, then we'd have academic meetings. And I, I give our academic people, Mike, Damone, and Amanda, a lot of credit. They spent a lot of time on Zooming with these prospects and their families about academics. And then Farrell, our nutritionist, outstanding job, and Phil and the strength coaches. I mean, so we set up all this stuff, Rich, where it was a meeting with the position coach, a meeting with the coordinator, a meeting with the head coach, a meeting with the nutritionist, a meeting with the strength staff. Um, shoot, Joe Sullivan might have been walking around with an iPad torn around campus in the rain multiple times just so people could see what our campus looked like. Um, so the time and the effort it took and the creativity um, to have a fairly successful class in our first year. Now, a lot of times in recruiting guys, these kids have been recruited by other staffs for two or three years. I mean, last year at this point, I'm still coaching, getting ready to coach in a game for another school. So what this staff was able to do in a shorter period of time without meeting people in person and what we believe, I mean, the rankings are what they are. We feel really strongly about this class. And again, that's a credit to all the people I just mentioned. Um, hard work, Rich, and um, just very appreciative for the staff. We'll go next to Dan. Coach, um, looking down the, the, the recruiting class itself, um, and when you look at your future roster construction, um, is there an element of it that you look at these guys and try to slot them into places that you might see as areas of need for for even immediate need or are there guys and are there guys on there that you look at and try to project ceilings? Like how does that kind of work when you're, when you're looking at a guy as a recruit? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of both. Um, one, I, we need more competition around here. You know, I, I love the, I love the culture and the foundation we've set here. I love it. 
And I believe that it's been proven through what we've been able to accomplish on and off the field, especially off the field. We need more competition. Um, championship programs are built on competition at every position. And we just don't have a lot of that right now. So we brought in a bunch of guys and we're going to bring in more guys and I want them to compete and I'm counting on them to compete. Now there's some guys who we feel might be two or three years away or a year or two away. Uh, but for the most part, we want these kids to come in and compete and push our starters or guys working for positions to get better. Uh, so I think there's a good mix of both. There's some key positions. If you look closely, uh, you'll see a lot of D linemen, right, Dan? And you'll see a lot of guys labeled as DB corner safety receiver um, I think we mentioned when we got here, we need to get faster. We have to get faster. So we got a bunch of guys right now. We probably have 10 or 11 guys who might be listed as a DB or a wide out. We'll figure out where they're best to play, but these are athletes with size length that can run. And that's really important. And then we need more guys who can get after the quarterback. Um, you know, you, you guys have seen it. We got to be able to get the quarterback down, whether he's a runner or whether he's a passer. Um, so I think you'll see it's a little heavy in those areas with, athletes and guys who can play up front we'll go next to kevin hey coach how you doing good kevin how are you good thanks um just locally i'm curious how you feel uh your relationships with the high school coaches here uh, have developed and um obviously with the season set to start in february is that something you can take advantage of that you know normally you wouldn't be able to see a bunch of high school games and in September and October? Well, I, I think the relationships are getting, are getting there. Um, you know, and, and I met a lot of great high school coaches in the area. It's just kind of hard because I haven't been able to go out and meet them all in person. Um, again, when I got here, it was such a short period of time. I had just a handful of weeks just to go out and recruit um, where I couldn't get in touch with all of them. I would have used the time that really the extra time and uh, that we would have had to go out and meet them and shake their hands and, uh, so I think it's going well, but I'd love to meet them more in person and make it more personal. Just like with recruits, we, we go out and meet. It's going to be hopefully a lot better when I can shake their hand in person. And as for the football games, honestly, I don't know if legally we'll be allowed to go out and watch them live just because of the NCAA's rules. Uh, but I'm excited to get some tape and see how kids have developed. You know, there's some kids we've been keeping a close eye on that haven't been able to play, and we're really excited to see how they develop. And that's why we, uh, we have some scholarships left. And um, again, I think this is a really good start to the class. And I reiterate start because I think you're going to see some additions. We'll go next to AJ. Hey, coach, you have about six, I think, recruits from the DMV area and obviously a handful of um, defensive backs and, and safeties. Can you talk a little bit about Coach Azar and what he's been able to bring as a recruiter for you and what he does on the trail that's so effective? Yeah, yeah. Um, Coaches are, I think he's a phenomenal recruiter, um, relates really well to people. He's relentless. He's very connected in that area. He was a high school coach in that area. Uh, and the thing he doesn't get enough credit for is how good of a football coach he is. Um, oftentimes the media will point to me, you know, cause I'm a DB guy. Um, Azar is a great DB coach and he's done a great job developing our players here and he's going to continue to develop them and these recruits here. But uh, relentless, incredible personality, cares about people, cares about family, genuine, doesn't sell stuff that's not real. He's honest. Um, I think he's one of the best recruiters in the country, truthfully. And, you know, I kind of joked with you guys last year, you know, um, my one year being back in football, I mean, I think on some sites at one point, I was the number two or three ranked recruiter in the nation. Um, some of these guys should be ranked a lot higher than they are. It just so happens that, you know, a guy like that might sign eight guys, but someone who signs two five-star guys is all of a sudden the national recruiter of the year. Um, I think there's many guys on our staff who are well-deserving of being ranked, but rankings are what they are. Azar is a great recruiter, and so are many guys on the staff. We'll go next to Rich. Uh, just on that theme, uh, I was looking at, you know, pretty heavy on defensive back. The, if you go with the rating systems, Burton and Steele were your two highest rated recruits. Could you just tell me a little bit about those two guys? Yeah, CJ's a guy who I got to know a little bit while I was at Ohio State, and I know coaches are knew him pretty well, um, just locally where he's from. Um, you know, I was originally committed to Florida, and we just stayed on him. Had a great relationship with him. Coaches are had a great relationship with him. Love his film. Um, really quick feet, good acceleration, great hips, very instinctual in coverage, can press, can play off, can play zones, has good ball skills, tough, 
can play inside in the slot, can play outside. Um, really good football player, really excited. He, he decided to believe in us. Um, and I think that says a lot when a kid with SEC offers and the chance to go pretty much anywhere he wants. I believed in us and our development and our school um, to choose us. And I think hopefully you'll, you'll see more of that. And then uh, I'm sorry with Bryce. Um, yes, Bryce. He's Bryce, a big kid. Bryce, Bryce is an interesting story. So when I was at Ohio state last year in summer camp, um, Bryce showed up and we knew about him and I personally clocked him when he ran his 40 and I did a double take cause he's a huge kid and we had him do it again. And I got the same time and we went in and we offered him a scholarship and then we met with him and his mom and, um, really liked him a lot. And, uh, you know, obviously I left and he had committed to South Carolina and, um, we stayed on him. Coach Duggan did a phenomenal job with him and coach Tim. And we just kept staying on the kid, staying on the kid. He showed some interest late and we spent a lot of time with him, showing him film, how he could develop. But Rich, he's a big kid who can run. I mean, he's a big, long guy that can run very, very fast. So I'm really excited to see what he can do. It's pretty interesting. Two SEC commitments that you got coming your place. Yeah. And again, uh, the exciting part, Rich, is that we, we weren't able to really spend time with them in person. So again, a credit to our staff for developing the relationships. And again, I appreciate the players for believing in us. Go next to Trevor. Hey, Jeff, how you doing? What's up, Trevor? Not too much. So it seems like you're a guy that really enjoys human interaction and just face-to-face -face talking as a lot of us are just. So what has it been like recruiting this year? You mentioned a little bit how it's been difficult just with the Zooms, but you've you know made the best of it. So just, are you still getting enjoyment out of it? And just how has it been kind of dealing with that from a personal standpoint? Yeah, I do enjoy it. It's, it's always fun for me to meet new people and uh, develop relationships with new people. I've always enjoyed that. Um, kind of getting used to Zoom. Like, I feel like I know you guys very well now after being a whole season with Zoom. And honestly, how much time have we really ever spent together? Um, so I think it can be done. And, you know, you hear a lot of coaches making excuses saying that, you know, they haven't been able to do this, that. And I mean, whatever you have to do, you do. And, um, you know, I think the Zoom worked out well. Am I tired of Zooming? No, I'm just tired in general. Um, but I, I'm good with the Zooming. We'll go back to Dan. Coach, I got, I got two of them for you. Um, one is, uh, you know, B BC historically has been known as a place that, that doesn't top the rankings. That, that's one of those places where like, they bring in developmental guys that are raw and, and kind of refine them. And, and this year's class with you is, is I think, the top-rated class since uh maybe jason uh, i think sent it out it was i think the best ranking ever at, at espn uh by espn metrics um for you just you know how do you balance that the the developmental aspect versus getting guys who are who are naturally like you said fast big fast long uh recruits and and just you know the the fact that you put pc in one year that that far up the rankings well i think um it all goes back to what are we looking for um I couldn't even tell you looking at this list right now that Jason gave me how many stars each one of these kids is. I, I, I don't, I don't care. Um, I respect the, all those websites and those people are awesome and they work really hard and, and do an unbelievable job, but I don't go on them very much. And I don't, I don't let that enter my mind because that can truthfully, if you do that, Dan, like, like we could have picked up another guy who was really highly ranked last week and it probably would have boasted us up to the top 28th class in the country, but does it fit you? And do you really need that kid? And does he fit your culture? Um, those are the most important things and we can't stray from them. We can't take a kid just to take a kid. Does he fit who we are and want to be? Does he fit us schematically? Um, and do we believe that he can come in and compete and help us win football games? And that's what this staff has done a good job of doing. It has spent more time evaluating than anything else because we believe that is the most important part. And you know, whether we're ranked 30th, 50th, 60th, or 10, uh, we'll find out how good this class is in a couple of years. And no one's going to remember what we were ranked, but they'll remember what they do on the field two or three years from now. It's like in the NFL draft, everybody used to say, oh, how are your picks? Well, shoot, at that point, we all feel great about our picks. We drafted them. But the thing is, let's find out in three years how good our draft class was. That's the truth. So I'm not going to sit up here and and I'm glad and I, I appreciate it. And, and I, I, I'm very grateful that, you know, people are talking about it as being a really good class, but 
but let's talk three years from now and see how this class really turned out. Um, every coach in the country right now, Dan's going to love their class. I mean, but I believe, we believe we got kids that fit us and we had certain criteria we were looking for to help this team. And we went out and we found them and, um, I'm grateful that they signed with us. And I'm sorry. My, my second one there was, um, was, uh, building off of what AJ was talking about, about Azar, I was wondering about some of the other coaches too. Do you assign coaches based off region or, or based on recruit? Like how does that just, I'm just curious how that works. Yeah. You, usually you send guys out by region at least to start and then you go positionally. So we have a guy like Azar, he's in the DMV. You guys know that, right? But then he's also going to go out and recruit the rest of the DBs and um, you know, coach Signetti, he's going to have a region. Then he's going to go out and recruit all the quarterbacks because uh, he needs to get to know those guys because Truthfully, I want the guy coaching that kid to want that kid and to stand on the table for the kid. Do you believe in him? Do you trust him? Do you like him? Can he process? And that's something that we take very seriously. Um, this year was kind of a little different, Dan, because we didn't regionally Zoom. We just kind of Zoomed more by position inside of the ball. Uh, so I felt like this year it was more, you know, Azar dealt more with the DBs and Sean dealt more with the linebackers and Frank dealt more with the quarterbacks. Um, that's kind of how we did it on Zoom this year because it was, you know, it wasn't like we were getting on a flight to go anywhere. We'll go next to Kevin. Coach, I think I asked you this maybe a couple of weeks ago, but now that the day is here, um, today's the one year anniversary of your press conference. Uh, you're, um, you know, taking a job last year. We've talked about, you know, reflecting on the season and, and all that, but the fact that you're signing your first class a year to the day, can you just kind of speak to the irony of that and, and kind of how crazy that is? Yeah, Kevin, I didn't even I didn't even put that together. So, yeah, it is pretty crazy. I literally was doing a press conference, and right after that press conference, I got right back on the plane and went to practice when we landed. And then a year later, it just shows you we, we haven't even been recruiting these kids for a year. I mean, if, if you look at it and you really want to think about it, the 2022 class we already have a jump start on. So again, to be able to sign a class of 2021 like we did without really much time, you know, because usually you're on these kids for two, three years. I mean, we're on some freshmen right now, you know, but we had to, when I, when I tell you this staff put in effort and deserves a break and the credit to the staff, don't, don't give me the credit for this class. Give it to the staff. Um, I mean, that's incredible when you think about it. You just made me realize we, we haven't even been recruiting these kids for a full calendar year yet. And we're already well into 2022 and 2023. It takes time and effort and um, just a really good job again by everybody involved. We'll go back to Rich. Jeff, very interesting uh, geographical net. I noticed uh, you've got 12 guys from DC going south, yet nobody from Pennsylvania or New York. Uh, it's kind of a lot different than recruiting classes I've looked at for a number of years. Yeah, Rich. Um, you know, the breakdown, shoot, we got two from Alabama, two from California, two from Georgia, three from Illinois, two from Mass, three from Jersey, North Carolina. Rich, you didn't even mention the kid we got from Serbia, Texas, two from Texas, four from Virginia. Um, yeah, I, I said it, you know, when we started, I think the BC brand is very powerful and I think it's underestimated. And I'm excited to walk into schools now and, um, you know, when we can. And I think, I think the logo carries more weight than people think and give it credit for. Now, did we not recruit Pennsylvania and New York on purpose? No, we recruited hard. Uh, we recruited kids from New York. We recruited kids from Pennsylvania and we'll continue to do so. Um, disappointing. We didn't get anybody from those areas for one reason or another, because they play great football there. Um, but we're also not going to be afraid to go out and compete with anybody in the country in any state in the country, uh, because we do believe the BC brand with the academics I mean, shoot, it's one of the best academic schools in the whole entire country that plays Power 5 football. And, um, you know, with the national television that we were able to be on this year and compete at a fairly high level, uh, people are talking. So we're going to go out and fight the fight in states across the country. Um, people want to come to school here. And we'll take one more question with AJ. Coach, if Rich isn't going to ask, I'll ask. So Elijah Krasnovic from uh, Serbia, kid who – uh, I followed the story a little bit. He didn't play much football at all. What did you see on his tape that you're like, Ooh, this is a good kid for BC. Yeah. Um, coach Applebaum did a phenomenal job there. One wait until you see the size of this kid and you talk about developmental. The other thing you guys that you should know, which our staff did an incredible job of. I mean, so we'd sit there at home 
you know, watch, watch film. And then we'd all talk like this and we'd say, man, wouldn't you love to see this kid do one of those drills, Matt? And, you know, a guy like Coach Applebaum would get the kid on the phone and, and uh, shoot the next day. We'd have the kid up on our video all watching, doing the drills, um, whether it was just to see how flexible they were, whether it was seeing him kick step and move his feet, whether see a DB do a backpedal drill or see a linebacker punch a sled and use his hands. I mean, our guys went out and had these kids film themselves, and we evaluated those too. So when you look at a kid like this, just a giant and a great, phenomenal kid, incredible story. You want to talk about a kid who sacrificed and gave up everything he had, and he's basically been sitting in a dorm room by himself just to wait for the opportunity to come to a college. I mean, away from his family. A really cool story. I'm excited for you guys to talk to him and meet him when he gets here. I mean, you're talking about a guy with huge, tremendous upside, and a credit to Coach Applebaum for finding him.